and we are grateful to God that Jesus came. He was sent for us to redeem us from our sins. You know, when, when, when God created the world, he created it perfect. And we know in the Garden of Eden, when he created man, he created woman. Everything was beautiful, everything was perfect. But what happened was that the enemy came and deceived man. When I say man, I mean mankind. And we fell. So it's not like God didn't know this was going to happen. He knew, you know, that, you know, there's a chance that we might rebel. But God had another plan. And the plan was to send Jesus into the earth and to redeem man back to God. Redeem means to bring man back into relationship with God because there was a like a, 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 a split where the, the enemy came in and that relationship was severed. But Jesus came to bring us back into union with God, bring us back into right relationship, into right standing with God. So we are grateful for the birth of Christ because if Jesus was not born, then he wouldn't, he wouldn't have died. And then we wouldn't have this hope of eternal life. Can you imagine our lives now as sealed for eternity? That means when we're not just, we're not just gonna be in this life only, but the life after we know that God come to give us everlasting life and eternal life. That means that life forever, everlasting. That means never ending. We don't, we do, it doesn't end when we die. It's everlasting. So I am so happy that Jesus came and uh, I'm just so excited. I hope everybody had a absolutely fabulous Christmas day. Uh, we're not just going to celebrate one day. <laughs> we're going to celebrate every day, every day. Christ in our life is a, is a time for celebration. I don't know about you, but we're not just going to just make it a one day occasion. It's a season to be happy. Jesus came to bring joy to the world. He came to bring hope to the world. He came to bring peace to the world and we can we are happy that that we can rejoice in this hope that we have and the joy that we have and the peace that we have because we've met the Lord Jesus Christ um, I just want to read um, a scripture before Keith plays our next Christmas um, melody and I'm going to just read from uh, let's, I, I'm going to read from Isaiah chapter 9 because Isaiah is an old, old Testament prophet and he prophesied the coming of Jesus long before Jesus came. So we know that the word of God is true and a lot of things were prophesied before it happened. And we just need to know that whatever God said is going to happen, um, you, um, you can guarantee it's going to come to pass. So this is what Isaiah, the prophet, prophesied how many thousands of years ago that would happen. So I'm going I'm to ask you to turn to Isaiah chapter 9. And I'm just going to read a couple of verses from verse 6 to, to 8. This I'm reading from the Amplified, and this is what Isaiah the prophet prophesied. He said, and from verse six, he said, for, for to us, a child shall be born. He, did, he, he prophesied this. For to us, a child shall be born. To us, a son shall be given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders 
and his name shall be called wonderful. Did you hear that? This is what our Jesus' name is going to be called. He's going to be called wonderful. He's going to be called counselor. And he's going to be called mighty God. Did you hear that? Jesus is the mighty God. Everlasting Father and the Prince of Peace. Verse 7. There shall be no end to the increase of his government and of peace on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from that time forward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will be accomplished, will, be accom will accomplish this. So the Bible is telling us in Isaiah that a son would be born, a son would be given. It told us about the different names that he will bring, the wonderful, counselor, prince of peace, mighty God everlasting father he said that the government as well are going to be up on his shoulders and that was absolutely true because jesus has had to run mary and joseph had to run for their life because there was a chance that jesus would have been killed before he even came so they have mary and joseph had to run for their life but he said his kingdom shall reign over all the earth and there shall be no end on increase to his kingdom. Can you see that we're talking about the kingdom of God? We're not talking about the United Kingdom. We're talking about another kingdom that Jesus is bringing to earth. He's bringing heaven to earth. And God wants us to reign in a different kingdom, the kingdom of Christ kingdom of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God. So I'm just um, happy that Isaiah prophesied this years ago and it came to pass. And I just want to read one more scripture and that is going to be in Luke. I'm just going to read it in Luke. Right, okay, I'm going to read Luke chapter 2 because it was prophesied and this is where it was fulfilled. Right, Luke chapter 2. I'm going to start from verse, verse 8. And uh, this is where G, uh, um, the angel appeared to the shepherds in the field. In that same region, there were shepherds staying out in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared before them and the glory of the Lord flashed and shone around them. And they were terribly terrified. I mean, can you imagine this bright light just shining them just in the middle of the night? Of course, you're going to be terrified because you're going to think, what on earth is that? But the angels said in verse 10, do not be afraid. For behold, I bring good news of joy, great joy, for which will be for you and all the people. Verse 11, this day in the city of David, there shall be born for you a savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. 
Then suddenly there appeared with, and, and suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, an angelic army praising the Lord and saying, glory to God in the highest on and on earth peace among men with with whom he is well pleased when the angels had gone away from them into heaven the shepherds began saying to one another let us go straight to bethlehem and see this wonderful thing that has happened which the lord has made known to us verse 16 so when so they went in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he laid in the manger. And when they had seen this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were astonished and wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these things, giving careful thought to them and pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that had, they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. So the angel came to them in the field, told them, you're gonna find this baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, exactly as the angel said, exactly is the way they found the baby when they arrived to the manger. <clears throat> he was wrapped in swaddling clothes. Jesus was, was prophesied and his birth was prophesied. And this is a fulfillment of it in Luke. Amen. God speaks. And God confirms his word with signs following. Amen. Anything God has told you, he will confirm it. And then it will manifest exactly as he told you. Exactly as the angel said, he would be found in a manger, exactly in a manger. And he said, he'll be wrapped in swaddling clothes, exactly as the angel said. They found the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. You know, the angels were astonished. They just could not believe that this had come to pass and exactly as, as it was told to them. So I just want to encourage you as we prepare for our next uh, music tribute to celebrate this birth of Christ. And God is with us. They said that he will be called Emmanuel. God with us, God with us, Prince of Peace, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, God of hope, God of love. This is what we have with us today. It's, I don't think we realize the gift that God's given us. You know, the angels, the, the shepherds came and they worshiped, they glorified God. The wise men came. They gave gifts. And that's why we give gifts today at Christmas time, because we want to show love to each other. And I know that a lot of you and a lot of people, even that don't even know Christ, this season just encourage them to do good deeds and to be kind and to show compassion. You know, so many people have reached out to the homeless. They reached, and this is a season where people do goodwill. Goodwill, they, they are more kind. <laughs> they're more kind at this time of year. You know, they, they're more helpful. And, uh, you know, it's good, you know, that we don't just um, let our kindness be like, you know, once a year. But Jesus wants us to walk in the, in the fruit of the spirit. Let me just list them for you. Joy, I mean, love. Love is the number one key. Love. Joy, these are all the things that Jesus brought for us. Peace, patience, you know, we, we live in a microwave 
um, society, we want everything now. But God wants us to walk in patience, cultivate patience, kindness. This is, as I said, not, not just once a year, but on a daily, daily basis. Goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This is what, these are the fruits of the spirit that Jesus wants us to cultivate <laughs> and to walk in. So if Jesus was not born, we would have all these wonderful gifts. These are the gifts, gifts of God, gift of life, gift of love. For God so loved the world that he gave. If you love somebody, you will give something. It's not just in word only. You would demonstrate your love because love is an action. It's not just a lip service, something that you talk about. Anybody can talk. Talk is cheap, my mom used to say. <laughs> and then I didn't understand what she meant when she meant that. It's, it's easy to chat. It's easy to chat. But action is another thing. Amen. Action is another thing. So I want us to remember that this season is a season of goodwill, good cheer, joy, laughter. And I can see Peter, come on, lovely to see you, Peter. <laughs> you look great. <laughs> you look great. And uh, I'm, I'm telling you, this is the season to be joyous. So I'm going to ask Keith to play us another um, tune. And uh, we're just going to enjoy this service. It's our Christmas service today. God bless. Thank you, Key, for that beautiful song. The light of the world has come. You know, the light of the world. You know, Jesus was sent from God, from heaven above. He came and his birth is significant. He, he wasn't just an ordinary baby. He was a child of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And as, as we were saying earlier, he came to bring us joy. He came to bring us peace. He came to bring us um, all the other attributes of him coming into the world was, a, was to give us a hope, a hope and a future. To bring, they, the Bible, um, Isaiah said he will be the Prince of Peace. He will be Emmanuel, God with us. Imagine we've got God with us 24 seven now, God living inside of us. Do you know what that means? That means that you've got the Prince of Peace on the inside. You've got the joy of the Lord on the inside. You've got the hope on the inside. Amen. You've got all this. This is a gift. This, I mean, you can't pay for this stuff. <laughs> this is the gift, eternal gift, eternal life. Hallelujah. This, this is a priceless gift. And this is a gift of love, love that's, that's never ending, never ever runs out, never runs dry, constant, 24 hours a day, 30, 365 days a, 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 a year, constantly, God with us, living on the inside of us, having his abode inside of us, this is the Prince of Peace, the joy, the uh, mighty God that we that was born, born into the world. So I thank you, Keith, for that song. And I just want to just welcome those that are just joining. This is our Christmas service um, this afternoon, and we are celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. And I just want to welcome Jackie as Jackie's joined us. Um, um, and Zuri and Maxine, Carlene just joined us. Mary Leon, so grateful to have you joining us today. Um, Hector, always a pleasure to have you. Shanique, again, God bless you. Isaiah, oh, your Isaiah um, prophet. <laughs> You've got a prophet in your house. Amen. We've got Nisha. We've got oh, um, Delry. Delreen, oh, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Um, we thank you, Elaine, for joining us. Donna, always a pleasure. Good morning. Peter, you. welcome you, Peter. 
Jacob, you're looking amazing. <laughs> All dressed up for the occasion. Lovely to have you. Um, Tryon, we welcome you. Good to have you. Dana, lovely to have you again. Tamara, all the way from Jamaica, we are honored to have you this afternoon. And I don't want to miss out anybody. Junior, of course, we can't forget you. <laughs> God bless you. And Daniel, Daniel, I'm telling you, faithful brother again. We thank God for your life. And Keith, no other, uh, our one and only. Nobody can walk in his shoes. <laughs> Uh, he, uh, God bless you, Keith. You're all special. You're all precious. Amen. You're all mighty in God's eyes. Don't care about what nobody else says about you. You know, sometimes we're, we're, we're worried about what people say. Don't worry about what people are saying about you. It's what God says about you that matters. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's what God says about you. God said you're great. You're Amen. mighty. He says you're my child. You're my son. You're my daughter. He says, I'm your father. He said, you don't need to fear. You don't need to be worried. You don't need to be anxious for anything. You know, he said that he said he'll leave. He won't leave us. He'll never forsake us. You can guarantee. Doesn't matter what time of the day is. He's there. He won't leave you. He won't abandon you. It's what God says about you that really makes the difference. You know, sometimes we, we can get so bogged down by what's going on in the world and stuff but let me tell you something doesn't matter what's going on in the world god is still on his throne let me tell you god is still in control and god is still god and there's nobody else can compare to him there's nobody else can even dethrone him no one can touch him he's a mighty god prince of peace everlasting father god with us so I'm just excited and I hope you guys are excited that Jesus came and he died. And if he didn't come, then we wouldn't have a child on earth that grew up, that walked this earth. You know, I had the privilege of going to Israel twice and I walked the walk path where Jesus walked. Can you imagine? I walked down the same road that Jesus walked down. <laughs> it's, it was awesome because, you know, when you read it in the scripture, it sounds like it's just a nice little story. But let me tell you, it's not a story. It actually happened. Jesus actually, there is an actual place called Bethlehem. There's an actual place called Jerusalem. There's an actual place that, that Nazareth. called Nazareth where Jesus was born. And we actually went to the place where he was born. And uh, we went to the Jordan River where he was baptized. I actually went in the water, the same water that Jesus went in. I was in that river, the Jordan River. And I said, Lord, this is where the angel came down and we saw, you hear that voice. This is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased and I was listening for I was listening for the voice I said like, God talk to me <laughs> shine down on me I'm in the same river that Jesus was in can you imagine this is not a fairy story guys <laughs> this is not a fairy story it's not like a good story Jesus actually walked on earth he actually walked on earth and we have the we have all the monuments there still there that we can go to and visit if we ever get the opportunity to go. Jesus is the true, true um, life giver. And today I just wanna say, welcome everyone to this a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, we, 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 we're gonna, uh, you know what? Today is actually the last Sunday that we have of 2021 when we gather again on the next sunday it will, we would have crossed over into 2022 this year 1921 has been so eventful for many of us and i'm telling you so many so many things has happened but you know what we are still here we made it guys we made it to the end of 1920, 
2021. But I'm telling you, it's a year I will personally not forget. This year we have, we have um, in, I think it was May of 20, 2021, we actually lost our daughter, our beautiful daughter. It's my one and only girl. And she got called up to heaven. I, I was there, she literally died in my arms. Mikkel's on here, her wonderful husband, only been married three years and they were just coming up to celebrate in their third anniversary. And who would know that I, I would be here and still standing? Mm. I'm telling you, it was a shock to the system. But let me tell you something. I've experienced, both of us, we have experienced that Prince of Peace. Amen. That Prince of Peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding. Even I can't understand it. Because in the natural, I'm supposed to be devastated. In the natural, I'm supposed to be broken and mash up. I'm supposed to be blaming God and saying, God, why did you do this to us? I'm supposed to be cursing God and all these things that in the natural, but, but we're just giving God thanks and praise because God knows everything. God knows best. I have learned that lesson a long time ago that God knows best. Amen. His ways are greater than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. If God decides something, who are we? to question God. Who are we to contest God? Yes. We are mere, mere mortals, mere humans. I cannot challenge God and say, God, why did you do this? All I have to say is, Lord, thy will be, thy will be done. And we've had to grieve the loss of our daughter. We've had, we've, I, and you know what happened just straight after that? Straight after my daughter died, I was hit with COVID and I didn't even know I had COVID. I, I, um, I was just sitting down, looking into space and just wondering who, what, what, what had gone on. And all I remember Chris saying to me, you've got to get yourself together. You've got to um, get up because we've got our daughter to bury. We got to bury our daughter. And I didn't even know I had COVID. Um, the ambulance was called and I went to into the ambulance. Apparently the reason I wasn't responding is because my oxygen levels were very low. And um, I, had, I had no idea because it, it, I didn't have any symptoms of breathing or anything like that, but um, I, I, I had like what they call, now, I understand now was brain fog. That's when you, you, your, your brain just gets all foggy. Anyway, I was admitted to hospital and I was in the, I was in the um, hospital thinking, oh, um, what am I doing here? I can't, be, I can't be in hospital. I've got a funeral. I've got a funeral to organize. And I said to the, to the nurses and doctors, I need to get out of here because I've got, um, I've got things to do. So what happened was I, they put the oxygen mask over my uh, mouth and I had like a machine and I'm thinking to myself, oh. I said, Lord, I said, Lord, uh, what am I doing here? I have to hurry up and get out of here. You've got to heal me now and just get me out of here because I've got things to do. So what happened was the devil sent a doctor into the room <laughs> I'm, I'm saying it was a devil because it was sent to put fear into me. And this doctor came in and he said to me, I remember he said to me, he said, it's not looking good. It says, you know, there's a chance that you're not going to make it. That's what the, that's what he said to me. And he said, um, you know, it's not looking good. Anyway, when I heard that and I heard those words, the, um, 
the psalm, the psalmist um, in Psalms 23 came to me. And it says, though I walk through the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. And I said, God, I fear no evil, even though they tell me I'm, 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 I'm near to death. I said, I fear no evil because you are with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And that's exactly what happened. That spirit of fear did not get on me. And within five days, I was out and I was, I was healed. I was, God healed me, set me free and got me out of there as quick as possible. And you know what? I know that I come that close to death myself but God said no you've got things to do and the, and the reason that you see me get excited is because God knows that there's still stuff for me to do Amen. there's still purpose on my life there's no way nobody or anything can take me out until I've accomplished and I know that I haven't even got started hardly so I know that I'm gonna be here for quite a while because God has got purpose on each of our lives. And that's why we're all still here by the grace of God and by the mercies of God. And I can testify that God didn't cause me to be broken or to be shattered. God didn't cause me to be, to be um, depressed or have anxiety. That peace, the Prince of Peace that came on Christmas Day that was born to bring Prince of Peace. That peace is an inner peace. It's an eternal peace. Is that when you're getting angry, when, when you're got, your mind is going 100 miles an hour, he gives you that peace. He gives you that calm. He gives you, he said, don't worry, I'm with you. And I'm talking about the Prince of Peace. I'm talking about the mighty God. I'm talking about the everlasting Father. I'm talking about that person that were came, that was born on Christmas day. I'm talking about that, that savior, Christ the Lord. We have him and we are grateful for him. I just want you to just unmute and just give God the highest praise. And the, the shepherds, when they got the news, they sang glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Amen. They sang praise. Thank you for Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for your praise. Mercy, Lord. 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 Just glorify Lord. you because you're worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah. You're worthy of all of our praise. You're worthy of all of our love. You're worthy of all of our commitment. Hallelujah. We love you. 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 We just glorify your name right now. Hallelujah. Your name, we exalt you on the high place. Holy, holy. We adore you. We adore you. Lord. God Almighty, wonderful, 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 than the greatest Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, thank you, thank you, Daddy. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. COVID as well, and we survived COVID, and we're here to testify and to give God glory. Um, I'm going to open up the platform at this time. Um, I'm just going to ask Keith to minister another song, and I just want you to get your testimony. This is going to be your last testimony of our uh, Sunday in of 2021, and we're just giving God the glory for how He's brought us. And then we, we've um, come through. So I want you to just um, prepare your testimony of victory for 2021. As we cross over into 2022, we just want the power of God to continue to sustain us, help us, provide for us, guide us, protect us. We know we need a lot of protection we need a lot of covering. So only the grace of God can cover us. So thank you as you prepare your testimony after this song is ministered. I want you to put your hand up and I want you to give God the glory and testify of his goodness uh, in 2021. Uh, we just, he's, brought, he's done so much for us. He's brought us a mighty long way and, and to, it has been a challenging year. But to God be the glory, the victor, the victory belongs to Jesus. He gets the glory. He gets the honor. Yes. In all things, Amen. we give God thanks in, in every situation, in spite of whatever we've been through. We just continue to give him glory, continue to give him praise. So thank you, Keith. Thank you. Thank you. Kiki, thank you so much. Um, welcome those of you that are just joining. I can see Marcia and Mikhail, um just joining. We're just celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. This is our Christmas service, but it's also our last Sunday in 2021. All of us have got a story to tell. We've got a story to tell of how we got over, how we got through our, our this turbulent year. But we are still here by the grace of God. I've just told my story. Yeah. Um, and I've got many stories to tell. And, um, but the one thing I know that his grace and his mercy has just been gracious to me. And is a, his, his grace and mercy has been multiplied to me. And um, I just want you, some, somebody just to unmute and just to tell of the grace and the mercy of God in your situation, in your life this year. I know this year is like no other year. Every year is like no other year. But, but to God, has we have been through, I know a lot of people, have been attacked this year, but God has been faithful. He's been faithful. Um, before we before we go on, I just wanted to um, to just um, pray for um, Trevor. I've had a prayer request for Trevor, one of the people that come onto our platform. He's been called into hospital. I think it was yes, was it yesterday? Yeah. Um, and he's had previous heart 
problems, issues. And uh, we just want to lift him up because we don't want anybody to be lost. We don't want anybody to, to we don't want anyone to, to, um, to suffer any kind of infirmity with us, us not supporting them in prayer because we're here to lift up one another we're here to support one another i am here because you guys pray for us we are here because you prayed for us you lifted us up in prayer and you asked god to come for us and to strengthen us and to help us and that's why we are still standing because of the grace of God. People look at me and Chris and they say, how can you guys be so strong with all that you've been through? I'm thinking, I said to them, it's not me. It has absolutely nothing to do with me. In, I said, it's got to do with the grace of God and the prayers of intercession that has gone up for us. And God is sustaining us. God is holding us up. God has given us the, the strength that we need. And that's what um, I, can, I can tell you that prayer works. I know prayer works. I'm a living witness of that. So we just want to... I'm just going to ask Chris to um, pray for Trevor because he's one of our, he's one of our brothers. And we don't want anything to happen to him. We just want to know that God had intervened and inter and we interceded on his behalf. And I just want um, to us to just remember Trevor at this time. He's gone into hospital with some heart issues. Um, he's, had, he's had previous heart attacks, but he survived. And God is going to cause him to survive again and deliver him from every attack of the enemy. So, Chris, if you can just lift up Trevor um, um, in Jesus' name. Thank you. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Father, you are supreme. You are God. You are the Alpha and you are the Omega. Father, you are the beginning and you are the end. And Father, you are the very source of our beings right now. And so we give you thanks and praise, even for, as we remember Trevor at this time, He's in divers' knees, Father, right now. He's, in, he's being hospitalized. But, Father, we know that by the stripes of Jesus, he was healed mm. 2,000 years ago. And right now, we affect yes, our authority in the name of Jesus mm. upon his life. Father, I speak to his respiratory yes, um, issues right now, his breathing issues right now. I speak to them, and I decree that yes, you, Christ. in the name of Jesus, be healed mm. in Jesus' name. Every Father, I speak issue. to every tissue, every mm. cell. Mm. Father, connected with his, his breathing, heart. to his heart, heart right now, mm. in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Father, I speak corrective oh corrective miracles right yes, now God. father god you are the god of the impossible you all things are possible to you, them that believe and so father we stand in a gap for trevor right now we intercede on his behalf and we decree and declare as mm -hmm. one voice mm -hmm. father that is healed yes, by the stripes god of jesus healed, father we healed, thank you for now. creative miracle Touching right now right those now. defective areas those right tissues now, those Lord. cells those organs father god will be restored right now in jesus name father we thank you that this day it will have a testimony father even as we recognize yes, your gift father god your gift to us which is your son who took the stripes in his body mm -hmm. that we can stand here and declare that we heal set free and deliver and so father we thank you that from the crown of his head trevor's head to the soles of his yes, feet god, that you right are now. touching touch every area right touch now heart, and that your efficacious all you, cleansing god. blood flows yes, through him yes, father yes, ignites yes, him yes, father yes, empowers him invigorates yes, him yes, strengthens yes. him and father we believe for a testimony father god that he has been released from yes, the hospital yes, right yes, now yes, in the name yes, of jesus so yes, father yes, we yes, thank you for that report in well, jesus well, name for we know yes, that it's your report yes, that yes, we're going yes, to believe lord and we, ex we embrace it and we receive it and we as we say thank you in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Thank you, so be it. Thank in Jesus, Jesus name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. God. Thank you, Father. God is a healer. 
is a deliverer. He will meet us at the point of our every need. And we, and we believe, <coughs> we, all we have to do is believe. Just believe that all things are possible. Whatsoever man believeth in his heart, it shall be done. You know, if we speak to the mountains and we have faith and we do, do not doubt, that mountain can be leveled and removed and be cast into the sea. So we thank God for the healing um, power of God that has gone up for um, Trevor. And I know that God is touching him even right now where he is in Jesus' name. Uh, I'm just gonna ask um, you to unmute and to, or, or put up your hands. Uh, just wanna give a, a, a testimony to the goodness of God. Um, just feel free at this time. Amen. Go ahead. I'll just say something about Trevor. Uh, you know, uh, Trevor, right, on yesterday morning, uh, he, he, um, he got on the, there's a brother Charles, brother Charles, a DJ, DJ brother Charles. He got on the show and he spoke on the show yesterday and on the, on the, on the worship show, DJ brother Charles. And um, we prayed for him there. And, but the thing is, uh, they wanted to give him his testimony, but he, he never really gave his full testimony. So I, I believe that he's still got a lot to, to give to this world. I still believe he's still, I st he's still got a lot to give the world. So I, I believe he's going to be saved. I believe he's going to be set free and delivered. I do believe he's still got his testimony to give before, before it's time for him to go. Um, yeah. But that's just interesting that you say that. Uh, I'll let anyone else talk now, or if any of Pastor Chris or, or Pastor Chris. Fish. Thank you. Thank you for that, Daniel. Um, bless you. Bless you. Um, is there anybody else that um, got a te testimony, a burning testimony? You can talk about uh, yesterday. You know, uh, I don't know what happened yesterday, but uh, maybe it is that uh, you reunited with a few people that uh, you haven't seen for a long time. And it's, there's a testimony to be had in terms of um, even that experience. We've got so much to thank God for. It's not everybody that is privileged of being amongst family and friends at this time. It's a very time where many people can feel lonely, feel destitute, um, be, feel rejected and ostracized. Um, so, I mean, even saying that, that God has given you the health and strength and even a provision to be a blessing to someone um, who is in need or just to be a blessing to your family or indeed someone being a blessing to you, empowering you for service. Um, I'm sure that we have something that we can give God thanks for, thanks for this morning. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. You know something? I, I'm going to take the simple things. I'm, I'm just going to say to you, <laughs> I went, I, went um, I was out doing shopping uh, on Saturday and such forth. And, uh, you know, one of the things is, I'm, this is a simple thing, but I give in all things, I give God thanks. And, uh, you know, um, in, in shopping, I, you know, sometimes I think, why do you sometimes think, why did I leave it a bit too late? But you know what? I did shopping late on Saturday, uh, even at, at the main stores, and uh, I got some, myself some bargains. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to give God thanks for everything. So things were slashed half price, the turkey, and, uh, you know, other things uh, that I bought. I even got some uh, non-alcoholic um, drinks, and uh, they're normally about two pounds. I got them for a pound. Nothing wrong with them at all. I just happened to be shopping late. <laughs> Even uh, I, I even got a leg of lamb and because uh, I was the last one in the store, the person said, OK, I will give you a discount. So I got a discount on my leg of lamb. I'm, the a person came in before me was I was waiting on them. They have paid the full price. <laughs> Let me tell you something. They paid the full price and I just waited for them to shift out of the store. And I said, I want a, t uh, I want a, a leg of lamb just like that. And uh, you know what? The guy said, oh, I can't do it. I, I said, yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he said, okay, I'm gonna take something off. And he took 
something off. It was a few pounds he took off, you see. It's exactly the same, even bigger than the one that um, the, uh, the person previous to me left with. So I say, thanks be to God. We're talking about favor. You see, when you're blessed and highly favored of God, there's much to testify. Look, the drinks I bought um, on uh, uh, Saturday, was it um, fr was it Saturday, fr Saturday, Friday? You know what? I'm confused because uh, <laughs> Christmas is on a Saturday. <laughs> Always confuses me when Christmas is on a Saturday. But uh, I actually was passing by there just to bless somebody with some gifts and such forth. And I went into the shop and uh, because um, I was dining around the dining table and someone had a pr particular preference of certain drinks and I uh, went into the shop and the drinks that they liked was in the shop and it was still a pound. And I thought, praise be to God. So what? I bought another seven <laughs> bottles, uh, eight bottles. And I said, I can be a blessing to, to somebody. And so look, in all things, I give God thanks. And it's in the thanksgiving that God's grace is made available to mm -hmm. us. So look, I'm always excited about God, what he's doing. I, every day I have a testimony. Um, and uh, so I'm just saying, everybody's got a testimony you know about the goodness of god and his grace and his favor upon us and we're and we're, we're going to share about his favor um as grace has already sh shared earlier about um mary so bless you um elaine go ahead yeah um i want to thank god because this being like one of my hardest tough years and there have been some great points God has really kept me. And I, for the last two years, I've went away for Christmas. This year we couldn't, we couldn't do it. But I said to God, I don't want to cook Christmas dinner. I want to eat out. Now, I didn't think that was possible because of what we're going through at the moment. But my son said that um, he's going to try and find somewhere for us to eat. I said to God, I would like to go to the Shard. Didn't know if it was going to be open. My son came back and said to me, Mum, I've got us a place. And uh, he said it's really a posh place, it's expensive. He didn't tell me where it was. But then later on, I asked him, where, where are we going? He said, the Shard. <laughs> exactly <laughs> where I said to oh, God, I, oh, want, wow. <laughs> I wanted to go. But that's what God is like. When I ask him for something, he gives you what you're asking for. But my son couldn't believe it. He just said, well, mum, I, I chose that. He says, I chose it. But I know, but I said to God before that I wanted, that's where I wanted to be. And we had an amazing time. He said to mum, this is a place where you can dress up. He's going to take me where I can dress up. And I did. I put in a beautiful long gown. And when I went into the bathroom, really lovely and posh in there, the lady came up to me, she's looking at me and I'm thinking, what are you looking at? I didn't say it a bit. I'm like, what are you looking at? Then she said, I love your gown. And I actually said, oh, thank you. Normally, I'm thinking, what are you talking about? It's just a dress. But I actually said, thank you. I heard myself saying thank you. And because God keeps saying to me, appreciate it. You know, when, when people give you compliments, say thank you or compliment somebody else. And when she said that, it just out of my voice, I said, thank you, you know. So I want to thank God for that. Not that the food was... Um, you know when you get tiny little of bits of food on a big plate? <laughs> That's what it was like, really posh. And it was nice. And it was worth it for that evening. It was definitely worth it. And I said to my son, because um, we took some photos as well, because I haven't really spent much time with my son. He's always busy, out, out, out. It's like, we didn't really know each other. He says, Mama, I know you don't really know me very well. You know, because we don't spend that time. So we was able to chat and chat and chat about anything that was better, um, that bothered him, that mattered to him. And I was able to talk about what ma mattered to me. And um, afterwards, because we saw the lights outside on the bridge, the Tower of, Tower of London, I said, I would like to go over there. I would like to walk there. And we did. And it was beautiful. <laughs> the lights were just beaming off the bridge and, you know, and. It was just glorious. And as we stepped outside, we looked up at the shard, up into the sky. You could see the lights were changing because then it became a bit cloudy with the, the clouds, but you could still see the beam of light shining from it. It was beautiful. So I just want to thank God for 
for giving me one of my best Christmas, to be quite honest, and oh, having that quality amen. time with my son. It, you know, it was amazing. Amen. Oh, praise be to God. And, and also, I also got some stuff cheaper in the shop when I went to the butchers. The man told me how much it is, and then I added some more stuff. And then he kept lowering the price, the total. And I figured, I thought you thought you said it's going to be this price. I said to myself, but then he kept lowering it, lowering it, lowering it. I thought, my goodness. I thought, thank you, God. Thank you. Hey, Amen. <laughs> That's yeah. right, man. And, and I wanted, yeah, I wanted a bottle of aloe vera, but they had two small, that's the small bottles of aloe vera, you know, the little ones. But when I went into a shop, there was a big one, so a big bottle, so I just bought one. So, you know, and thank you for blessing me with the food overflowing. But it was so much, I had to give some away. So I've got some away to give to the homeless when, um, tomorrow. But thank you very much, and thank God. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Oh, Elaine, that is such a beautiful, beautiful testimony. I'm telling you, God is really favoring you. I'm telling you, God knows how to reward us. He knows how to, you know, give good benefits to us. And just, you know, I'm just so grateful to God that God is really touching your, touching you and just know how to make that time special for you, Elaine, because I know that, you know, you deserve it. God bless you. And, uh, and uh, it's just a wonderful testimony. Ah, oh, thank you for sharing that. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go to Donna next. Donna? Good morning. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, we can yeah. hear you. Okay, because I'm, yeah. Good morning, everyone. I hope that you're well. Um, I just wanted to, I was, I'm in an hour and do I say anything, but I, I felt I needed to. I've got so much to give God thanks for. Um, I just feel, afternoon, Keith. <laughs> I just feel that there's so much that he has done in my life in this year. And, um, I'm just grateful that he has kept me, even if I think about more recently, I wasn't feeling 100%, I was slightly under the weather, um, but there were so many things that I needed to do, work-wise, home-wise, Christmas-wise, and I just didn't know if I would be able to physically do those things. One sec, baby. But God has truly kept me, he strengthened me, um, and all things that needed to be done in good time, whether it be work, for my family and for my home for Christmas has been done. So I just want to thank God that he continues to, to strengthen me. Um, even um, when things don't seem like they're going to be achievable because of God's grace, they always are. Things always fall into place. So I just wanted to, to publicly thank him for all that he's doing in my life and all that's to come. Um, another testimony that I want to give is that um, since leaving my previous job, I started a new one and, you know, God was gracious in that. Um, but what I thought financially it would be, it's not quite been. Um, so there have been times that have been a little trickier. Um, but God has um, allowed someone to bless me. I, I will say, I'm not going to say who the person is, but they're actually on this platform. Um, they actually blessed me financially so that when I was unwell recently, I could take a day off work to rest. And I know um, that that is God alone, mm -hmm. truly is a demonstration of his love. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even know this person very well. And yet because of their obedience to God, they were able to bless me so that I could rest, take a day off to rest and to do some of the things that I needed to do. As I've told you, many Amen. things I still on the right to Christmas. So I just wanted to say that publicly because I want to thank the person, mm -hmm. but also because I wanted to say that, you know, God's, God's grace and goodness is abundant. And sometimes it's not the people that you necessarily go to. If God has called you to do something just to be obedient. Sometimes it's not the person that you're blessing that will bless you in return. He will send somebody else to bless you um, as he has done in my instance. So I just wanted to, to share that and to, mm -hmm. yeah, and to just to say Merry Christmas all. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Donna, for sharing that. You know, when you was talking about that person, uh, who blessed you, um, tears came to my eyes because God spoke to this person about you. 
God is concerned about you. God knows what you need and God will place it on their heart to do such an awesome thing for you. And they know who they are right now. And I just want to speak a blessing over their lives. Thank you. Father, I just thank you for this person. You know who they are, Father God. You know who you placed Donna in their hearts to, to just give her that financial blessing, Father God, because that's touched Donna's life so much. And it's actually touched me as well to see how faithful and how gracious and how kind you are, Father God, just to, you know, our needs, you know that we need rest, you know, you know, when we don't have anything, you know, when, Father God, at times where it looks like we just can't see how we're going to get through. But Father, you're so gracious okay. and you're so kind to really just touch somebody's heart. And Father, I really pray a blessing on that person. I know they're listening right now because I know they're on this platform, whoever they are. You know, it's not for us to know who we are, but God, you know. And I just pray that, Lord, the seed that they have sown will be multiplied back into their own lives. That Father, they will never lack, but they will have an abundance, Father God. They will always have seed. You said you give seed to the sower. And Father, I thank you that they will never, never, never lack, but Lord, you will prosper them Amen. and advance them, Lord God, in every area of their lives, Father God, because you, Father God, they were faithful and they were obedient to listen to that still small voice and to listen to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And Father, they followed it through that Donna could receive such a wonderful blessing. So I pray that God, that the blessings will be multiplied back to them. Amen. As it blessed Donna, and it's really blessed. The testimony has really touched my, my heart. So I thank you for that, Lord. I pray, for, I pray that right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you, Pastor Chris. Thank Amen. You. Praise be to God. I, I just want to, um, I'm here and I'm thinking, um, what is the best gift you can give someone? It's a salvation or just a sense of knowing that God is real. And um, I, I didn't really want to mention this, but, um, you know, as Grace was praying, I was thinking about myself, thinking about, uh, I know I shared a testimony, but, uh, you know, I had a family dinner yesterday and, uh, you know, um, I hadn't seen my, I've got twin sisters. I haven't seen them for a long time, a uh, little while now. And, um, you know, God impressed upon me to um, really just give them gifts. And, uh, <laughs> you know, God's, God is good because God will tell you what to do, what to give. And um, I decided that I was going to bless my, my sisters with uh, Bibles and their children with Bibles and their children's children. And, um, and uh, the sense of joy of receiving it is like, cause one of my sisters, uh, both of them, they can't, um, one I was aware of, but the other one I wasn't that she can't really read without glasses and she needs big print. And I was able to bless them both with big print, super giant print Bibles. And it's like, oh, thank you. Oh God, this is what I really wanted. And uh, not only that, but, uh, and what I'm saying, they haven't got a deep relationship with God, but I was also able to pray with them because both of them are sick and infirmed and uh, have a lot of ailments. And I was able to address that and I was able to, just um, bring some food for them. Again, one of my sisters, I was totally unaware, a uh, cupboard was absolutely beer. Oh. Absolutely beer. And I bought food. Mm. You know, it moves me because um, God just spoke to me and I said, let me just do it. Let me just do it. I don't know. And uh, I just bought the food and she said, oh God, you see him, look in my cupboard. My cupboards are actually beer. 
And uh, I know God is a God of wonder and he's a God of love and he will move you. And I just believe through that testimony uh, uh, that my, one of my sister's son is, um, both are children, they're 26, 27, uh, 30 odd, and, um, and the ch- grandchildren as well. And God blessed each and every one of them because I thought about myself, you can give people, you know, um, different things, but if you give them the source of life, which is Jesus, and you can reflect Christ in your giving, what is essential to them, to meet them at the point of the need, that is the most important thing. And so I don't say these things because, you know, I just want to say that God blesses me, but I want to say that God has sown a seed. My sister comes on this platform. One of my sisters come on this platform quite regularly. And um, God richly blessed them. And so, you know, I've, I thank God for the season. And the season is about, the reason for the season is not necessarily about Jesus Christ, so, so to speak, but it's about what Jesus accomplished through his death and his re- resurrection, through his birth, through his death and his resurrection, that all should be saved. And it was just a joy to be able to pray for them, pray for their spirit, pray for their homes, pray for their family, and just see them embrace it in faith. And um, to God be the glory, praise mm-hmm. God. To God be the glory. That's all I can say, to God be the glory. God knows all things. Um, Daniel, go ahead. To God be the glory. This is so amazing what you're saying, Chris, uh, Pastor Chris. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why it's amazing. It's amazing because God is good and God has the victory. And before you were, before you were about to say that, I was, I was thinking to say about when I came to, when I invited myself to your house, because, I'm, <laughs> because I just invited myself to Pastor Chris and Grace, and I just got in a taxi and I, I just went there and you handed me this Bible, right? And I don't know what you've done with this Bible, but it, it, was a, it was a blessing. It was a blessing from the Holy Spirit because yesterday my sister came over, right? And I, hand, and I wasn't planning to, to pray for her or anything. And then the Holy Spirit was like, pray, pray, pray. And she was here with her friend, right? And I'm starting to pray and I get a phone call. I get a phone call from my brother, my brother in Christ, brother Leon. I'll mention his name, brother Leon, right? And I pick up the phone and we start praying together. We're two or three gather. God is in our midst. We pray together, right? And for God just said to me, give, give your sister the Bible, this Bible here, right? And I put it in her hands. I put it in her hands. This Bible, this is powerful. The word of God is powerful. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. I put it in her hand like that. Boom. I put it in her hand, right? And we're praying. We're praying. And something's happening. It's like a release. It's like whatever she, whatever, I mean, she's touching it from Genesis to Revelation. Things are coming out of her. Things are coming out of her like uh, whatever wickedness was in her is coming out of her because she felt so much at peace. And afterwards, she was like, the peace is upon me. I said, the Holy Spirit has just blessed you. The word of God has just blessed you. Amen. You've been Amen. Healed. You've been set free. Amen. And I just love your story. Uh, I just love you, Pastor Chris and, and Grace, because, you know, You've uh, really helped me out in, a, in, a, in many ways. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not ashamed of uh, anything that I've done in my life. And this has been one of the greatest things I've done in my life. The greatest, thing that's, the greatest, the, the greatest um, family I've, I've managed to get on this uh, platform. Brother Junior, Keith, uh, Elaine, um, Donna, everyone, Marcia, everyone, Beverly, everyone, everyone. All my brothers and sisters in Christ. It's just like you're you're just amazing. It's just like it's just like it's. I say what it's like when I first got on this. Uh, when I first got on the on the platform, it was like being in Jamaica. I was like, I'm in Jamaica. I'm in a church in Jamaica. This is what it's all about. Because I had a dream in my in my coma. I also had a dream about going to Montego Bay and being by the waterfall in Montego Bay with my wife there. My wife was there. And now I have like um, a spiritual wife. We're not going to get married for about, I don't know how long, but anyway, we'll, we'll get 
get married eventually. But um, anyway, I don't want to go off to onto the different subjects. <laughs> but Pastor Chris and Grace is not just a blessing from Jesus, is a miracle from Jesus. Because when before you were even in your mother's womb, both of you, before you were even in your mother's womb, he knew you and he created your soul before and all the works that you have done on this on this earth um was the the children that he gave the children that he gave you you know in the book of ephesians ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 for we are his worksmanships his own master work a work of art created in christ jesus reborn from above spiritually transformed renewed ready to be used for good works which god prepared for us beforehand taking past which he set so that he would walk to them, live in the good life, which he prearranged and made ready for us. Amen. So, Ephesians chapter 2, verse, uh, verse 10. And I, I thank you for inviting me to places, to your daughter's homecoming. Uh, touched my heart, you know. And to, uh, to, to, to invite me to the love fest that I, I managed to get there. And invite me in your home, you know. Just a, you know, a stranger because like, you didn't even know me, you know. I could have been anyone. I could have, I could, have, I could have had my Italian family in a, in a van, and, <laughs> and with, with the mafia, I could have come with the mafia because my my mum used to work with the, not work with the mafia, but she used to like she used to talk with the mafia. You know, she she talked a lot, so she used to talk with the mafia in Italy. Uh, so I could have come there with, I could have come there with, uh, you know, but you you trusted, you had trust in the Lord, and you had trust. And I didn't touch. I didn't. I didn't take anything. You know, <laughs> I, I came with love. I came with love. So I just love you in Jesus' mighty name. Bless you. Oh, Daniel, thank you so much. I tell you, your family, everybody on this platform, are family. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're yeah. anybody's welcome anytime to come to my home. My home is one of those homes that uh, the doors are always open. <laughs> yeah. So if you feel like you want to come and spend some time with us, feel free. We're not one of them pastors that, that you know. We just, you know, we do. We don't. We don't mix with um and the congregation. No, we're not like that. We're not stuck up. We're not proud. We're humble, and uh, yeah, we're there for everyone. So God bless you, Daniel. We love you, uh, and you're a blessing. And we uh, we thank God that I don't even think Chris remembered that he gave you that Bible. He had no idea. He gives out Bibles a lot, but we're so glad that you know your your sister. Um, God, God used uh, the word of God to really pray and to that she could be delivered. That is awesome. We give God all the glory for that. Mm. Yeah, we're so grateful to God for that. God bless you for that sharing that testimony. Yeah, so um, we're going to move on now because our time is going and uh, we've still got the word to come. So we're going to ask Keith to just um, put up the bank details because we're going to take our afternoon's offering now. And we just want you to give cheerfully, give willingly um, as what God has purpose on your heart, what God has placed in your heart to give. Our giving is part of our worship. This is part of our thanksgiving. It's part of, so God, we give this seed to you. We give this um, offering to you because we know that it will touch the lives of other people. And if you know this ministry, we don't, we don't, we use this ministry to give back, to give back to anybody that's in need. So if you have a need, let us know. We are there to meet you at the point of your need. We're there to help. We're there to assist. Uh, you're, you don't need to be operating in, in want or lack. God is um, faithful to, 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 to place you in a family where we, we, we don't just talk about love, we actually um, demonstrate it as well. So the bank details are on the, on the screen, uh, SORC code 230580 and the account number 2685098983. And just give, give cheerfully. And I'm just gonna pray. Father, I thank you for the gifts. I thank you for every single person that we give to the, this afternoon, Father. I pray that, Father, you will see that as we stretch our hands to give, Father, that, Lord, whatever you purpose in our heart to give. Father, I pray a blessing upon every single gift, Father. I pray that you bless it, multiply it, 
and I pray that Lord it that it'll be used for your for your for your kingdom's sake, Father God. And Lord, I pray for every giver that Lord God, you will bless their finances, bless their home, bless their store baskets, Father. Multiply back to them, Lord God, everything that they desire. Father, because you're a good God, you're a faithful God, you're a good, good Father. Bless it and multiply it, make it gooder. And Lord God, let it always come, Father God, as we give cheerfully, we <clears throat> ask your blessing upon it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Keith. <clears throat> Praise be to God. Um, thank you, thank you, Keith, for um, that uh, song. Unto us a child is given, unto us a child is born. Praise be to God. Um, um, it's, it's so important to recognize um, why Jesus came. And, um, but not only that, it's to recognize um, the purpose that is placed in each and every one of us. And uh, I just, um, I know that Grace has spoken about um, the birth of Jesus Christ. Uh, I just wanna look at it from a different perspective because, um, you know, all, all the time I've heard that Jesus is the reason for the season. And when I thought about it, God, it's not that, God through Jesus Christ would just come into this world just to be glorified. But he came for a purpose. There was an assignment. There was a divine assignment. And he came, he emptied himself of all his majesty, all his grandeur, all his deity, so to speak. And he came and in in a form of a child, a baby. He was conceived in a mother's womb, not by human intervention, but supernatural intervention. The Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary and she conceived. But I, I just really wanna just bring out a few points about this and how important it is to recognize the reason, and this is why I was so emotional about uh, my sisters, because it's not just about, they, they were brought up just like me, being sent off to Sunday school, of Sunday school van picking us, sorry, I just remembered when I remember these things, a Sunday school van picking us up and, uh, and just uh, escort, uh, driving us to the church. And we've been sort of led out of this Sunday school van, van straight into the church. And uh, invariably soon after that, straight into Sunday school. And I, I couldn't wait at that time to graduate to an older age whereby I could uh, walk myself to um, Sunday school. In other words, I would take the scenic route and go through a park. And oftentimes we'd spend a little time playing in the park before we arrived at church. <laughs> that's what it was like. And that's the reality of it. And so I remember these things and just seeing my sisters and just thinking about the reason for the season. What is it? Jesus died for every single person. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life or eternal life, the, the God kind of life, the life in full, the complete life, the wholesome life, the real life, the true life, the divine life. That's what it's about. And um, he came not into this world to condemn the world, but through him, the world might be saved. So it's not for me to point the finger at an unsaved world, but to pray that they will be saved and be part of God's plan to make them special. Jesus came to make each and every one of us special. 
so that we might be the family of the true family of God, heirs of the Father and joint heirs with Jesus Christ, having full autonomy over all the graces of God that it would flow out to us as children. And uh, you know what? I'm thankful for all that God has done, is doing, and will continue to do on our behalf. And uh, so I just really want to, you to turn with me uh, quickly to, um, to first uh, Luke chapter one and verse 26. And uh, I'm gonna read up to a certain point. I may stop before then as the Holy Spirit leads me. And there's so much in this I saw and um, so much that we need to take cognizance of, uh, we need to use the examples that are given. And um, I'm really focusing on, uh, focusing on Mary and the position T took in bringing Christ into this world and uh, how God would look upon her as a handmaiden, as a servant, recognizing that <laughs> there's so many misconceptions out there, but I was reading about it and I'm thinking to myself, well, I can identify, not from the sense of uh, giving birth to a child, of course not. Um, that would be supernatural. I don't know if that would ever happen. Um, God is a God of miracles, but I've never heard of a man giving birth to a baby, um, that I have not. But all things are possible to them that believe. I'm not gonna put my hand up and say, God, make me the first person. No, I'm not gonna do that. But uh, you know what? All things are possible to them that believe. Uh, so I'm just gonna move swiftly on before God says, I've selected you, Chris. <laughs> but praise be to God. I'm just gonna read uh, from uh, Luke chapter, one and verse 26. Now in the sixth month of, Ele uh, of Elizabeth's pregnancy, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed, uh, that word betrothed means engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, a descendant, and this is Mary being a descendant of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, the angel said, greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. Let me tell you something. For every person that received Jesus Christ as Lord and savior, God is saying to each and every one, behold, favored one, God is with you. God is not only with you, God is for you. And there is an assignment down upon your life that you would never imagine the extent of. It takes a revelation to God to understand that. I wanna show something about, um, share something about um, Mary's character. But she was greatly perplexed at what he said and kept carefully considering what kind of greeting this would. Obviously, if an angel shows up and the angel says, comes to her and says, greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. You're thinking, really? Uh, and you, you might be a little confused and a little perplexed because you're thinking, what is an angel coming to do, visit me for? What, is, what do they want of me? And the angel says, the angel said to her, do not be afraid. And so obviously the, the, the angel would have recognized that perhaps there was a little apprehension in her voice or, or fear, a sense of timidity. It says, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You have found favor with God. Let me say this. When God chooses each and every one of you, he, you find 
favor with God. Remember, it's God doing the choosing. You don't choose what time to get saved. God chooses that time for you. And you might say, well, when I was ready. I can categorically say I wasn't ready and God chose me at an appointed time because I was, I was busy doing my thing. You see, I was dancing. I was, uh, you know, it might be vainglorious now, vanity now, but at the time it was dear to me. But God chose me. God chose each and every one of you. And I want you to recognize that you're not here by chance. And as the uh, scripture that um, Daniel read is one of my favorite, favorite scriptures because it explains that God actually took time over you. Um, Ephesians 2.10, he took time over you to emerge at an appointed time to fulfill the assignment given to you by and through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why I say you are the reason for the season. Jesus, Jesus came as a servant, as a bond servant, as a, somebody that was subjected to the will of God so that he may save each and every one of you and give you the fullest of life, give you the God kind of life, the Zoe life, the life that emanates out of his spirit, a regenerated spirit. So here is in verse 30, the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Listen carefully. You will, will conceive in your womb and give birth to a son and you shall name him Jesus. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus Emmanuel, God with us. So many people have that name, but I don't know if they get the full revelation of what that name means. God with us, Emmanuel. And um, I just want to pause there for a second because I just want to just you to use your imagination and just think about it. An angel visits you and says to you, you're going to conceive a child and you're already betrothed or engaged to somebody. And you're thinking, how is this so? Being a bit, how is this going to come about? Now, there's, there's something you need to admire about Mary because you see, having a child out of wedlock, she wasn't married. A child out of wed wedlock was scorned upon. In, in those days, by law, it was adultery now can you imagine she's and and let me say this when we're talking about mary we're talking about a a, a a teenager we're not talking about someone who's 25 35 she's a teenager in those days in that society um young girls were betrothed to older men and she would have been about between 13 and 15. So think about it again. Someone, someone comes to you and says, you're gonna bear a child and you've not even had sex. You're a virgin, pure virgin. And you're thinking, how is this gonna be? You know, um, I can sort of, there's a cult, uh, you know, God has um, connected me with the Maasai people and, um, one of the things a culture is about, I think that uh, I know that there's something deep, deeply spiritual about the Maasai people because there are a lot of things that they do that reflect things in the Bible. But their women marry early. Young children at 13, 14, 15, they get betrothed and they get married. And so here it is at this age, 15, Mary is betrothed to Joseph, a man she barely knows, only basically by name perhaps, or just coming into contact with being introduced to him, but having no intimate relationship. And then an angel appears. Now, let me say this to you. God would have visited you many times and he would have spoken to you, whether it be a vis through a vision, whether it be through the word, whether it be through an audible voice, 
whether it's free through prophecy, whatever the case may be. And you may have received that word with a pinch of salt. In other words, you have not taken the word seriously. But at the age of between 13 and 15, Mary is perplexed. And let me go on to say this. To her, it would have been a hard saying because people caught in adultery, as we already know, when Christ was walking, when Jesus grew up, he had to encounter someone who had been caught in adultery. And the penalty for being caught in adultery is what? To be stoned to death. So there's other things that she would have to consider. Now, what about my reputation? What about me possibly being stoned to death? All these things, we don't think about it. But here is the character of Mary, a handmaiden. It says, verse 31, it says, listen carefully. You will conceive in your womb and give birth to a son and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great, eminent, and eminent. He will be called the son of the most high, and the Lord of God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob, Israel, forever, and his kingdom, there shall be no end. In verse 34, Mary says, to the angel, how will this be since I am a virgin and I have no intimacy with any man? He didn't, she didn't even say with my betrothed, with any man. No experience whatsoever. So she's thinking, can you imagine it? You're probably thinking, how is this going to happen? Is it going to be another man? Is he going to be big burly man that's going to come in on me? I mean, is he, what type of man is he going to be? You understand? A young girl. I just want you to get the context of what's happening because sometimes we look at this story and we think, you know what? She was just faithful. Many times we're called to do something. It's not about whether you understand. It's a matter of, of do you trust God? When God speaks to you, do you trust him? As Proverbs was saying, three and six, trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not onto your own understanding, but in every way acknowledge him in your midst and he will direct and make straight your path. It's the trust issue that God is looking for. And here, why God will say that to Mary through the angel, is because in receiving the word, the miracle will happen. There are so many miracles and there's so many, we are incubators and we are carriers, carriers of God's assignment. And we don't realize it. We have a womb on the inside, which is our spirit being. And in that spirit being, we are carrying the will of God. And we don't recognize it. And oftentimes we're looking to do our own thing. And we consider things. Take into consideration the price that we've got to pay. Oh, that may forfeit my, my um, university or my studies. That may forfeit my, my choice of um, wanting to get this or that or pay for uh, all types of things. Oh, no, I'm delaying because what? I want children when I'm a lot older because of my career. Mary didn't say that. <laughs> and the word of God says um, in verse 35, then the angel replied to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you like a cloud. For that reason, the only pure sinless child shall be called the son of God. So here, Mary is, again is receiving a word that says, the son of God, that you're gonna give, you are actually gonna give birth to the son of God. 
I don't think you get it. You are, you are going to carry the son of God in your womb and you're going to give birth to the son of God. Didn't say that the son of man, but the son of God, God himself coming down, stripping himself of all his glory, coming down in human flesh that he may relate to humanity, relate to you and I, that we might have life and have it more abundantly, life in full, live the God kind of life through his divine nature. Having a divine assignment upon our lives so that what? God might be glorified. And uh, don't, you, don't you just love this word? It says, and then the angel replied to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you like a cloud. And for that reason, the holy, pure, sinless child shall be called the Son of God. Think about it. Selah. And listen, even your relative, and so the angel now gives her a little encouragement and says, even your sister, or even your relative, Elizabeth has also conceived a son in her old age. And she who was called barren is now in her sixth month. What God is saying to you and to me is that when we are born again, God is, <laughs> God is created in us a miracle that is yet to be birthed. Each and every one of you, you're a living miracle. Daniel, you're a living miracle. You don't know that your testimony is that testimony that will give life and give birth to many other miracles. You just don't know it. You went through because God chose you because, and you might say, well, I, mess, I was messed up. God, God would choose a 13, 14, 15 year old to carry a child, carry him himself. Why didn't he cho choose a 30 year old? That was a virgin, mature. God doesn't look at the age. God doesn't look at your intelligence. God looks at your obedience. That's what God is speaking about here. Your obedience. Have you obeyed God? Don't you know the moment you obey God, the miracle is already enforced upon you. When you, God prompts you and constrains you by the Holy Spirit, and you just say, I'll do it, Lord. That's when the miracle is available to you. And not just, because, not just to you. Mary didn't conceive that child for herself so that she could be honored and seen as a, a, some symbol of uh, blessing, you know, as in the Catholic Church, some sacred woman or a saint. Mary was didn't look at herself like that, but she looked at herself as a servant of God. Available, a vessel available to be used of, of God. And so here the angel encourages her and says, to, in, in effect, all things are possible for God. God makes the impossible possible. Even Elizabeth, who was barren, who couldn't have children, she is now pregnant, six months pregnant. I'm telling you, you will conceive that child. Hallelujah. And it says, now at this, that this time, Mary arose. Sorry, and it's, I'm sorry. It's, so it's verse 37, it says, for with God, nothing is or ever shall be impossible. Then Mary said, behold, I am the servant of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. And the angel left her. So according to the word, be unto me. How many times has God spoken to you? Have you said, according to your word, Lord, Lord, be unto you? Or have you surveyed your situation? Have you thought about what would people say? Or what are they going to think about me? Or I haven't got what it takes. Or, I haven't got no experience. Let me, 
we've heard continued testimonies coming from this platform. Even Grace shared the, during the week how God gave her a job that she had absolutely no experience of. And God elevated her to um, <laughs> management. Management over something that you have no experience of. Technical manager. Can you believe that? I marvel at God because I'm thinking to myself, you know what? I, I said to Grace uh, the other day, I said, <laughs> I said, <laughs> remember I said on the platform, I said, Grace can't even, we've had a television for 40 year, 14 years, a plasma. And every single time she says, oh, Chris, how do you turn it on? Because when visitors come, she always turns to either the children or me and everything else. I said to her on that day, I said, Grace, be healed right now. You're going to use that television. You know, one day I came, the, like the same day or the day after I came in, I thought, how did that television get on? I did, I, who turned on the television? She said, I turned on the television. God healed me. <laughs> <laughs> Even after 14 years, God can still heal you and elevate you and bring you into your divine purpose. I, I said, <laughs> I said, grace, <laughs> grace was promoted to manager and she has no technical skills. Where does that happen? That's the grace of God. You better believe that's a miracle because it wasn't about her being a technical manager. It was about the purpose for which she was there. And it is a greater purpose than her just working within that workforce. It was about people being healed, set free and delivered. And remember this, I said that grace was instrumental in reaching out to a whole workforce, but not only that, but to, for starting um, a, a Christian um, group, a Christian prayer fellowship. God way, looks way beyond what we're thinking. Here, Mary says in verse 38, and I want you to make note of this, faith comes when you receive the spoken word of God or the implanted word of God or the implanted purpose of God. When you don't say, I can't, say, I can and I will. Mm -hmm. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You might not have the ability. You might not have the disposition to do it. You may be incapable of doing it in your own strength. But once you are called of God to do something, God will confirm his word through you with signs following. She said, I will receive that word according to your word, be it unto me. The moment she said that, she was impregnated supernaturally. And you might say, why did God have to go through all that? Why couldn't he just choose a man? a good man, a godly man, to just come and die for our, in our stead. No, there's none perfect. It took the pressure. The, see, we are cleansed by the blood of Jesus. We are, there's life in the blood. If you go to any medical doctor or anybody who has any authority, they will say that the blood that we have comes from the father if if um jesus was to be born of a man the blood would already been sin would have already been sin contaminated that's why it needed the blood of the father father god jehovah god once and for all <laughs> hallelujah praise be to god so when you look at it, you're thinking, oh, that's why. Yeah, that's why. That's why. Yeah, that's why. That's why. Yes, that's why. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness because it comes straight from the throne of God. Hallelujah. So let me just read down. 
And I'm just saying to you, every one of you, you are blessed and you are highly favored when you receive the revelation and you receive the word in your spirit. The, see, if ye, the, the word of God says this, if ye abide in me and my word abides in you, you shall ask whatever you will and it shall be done unto you. It's the abiding word. It's the living word in you. It's the revelation of the word in you that gives birth to life. As Mary received the revelation of that word from the angel of the Lord, the messenger of God, immediately Jesus was conceived in her womb. And it took nine months for her to carry that child, just like any other woman. But remember this. It's not about, you can't take time out oftentimes to think, what are the consequences of me doing this? Do it. And this is, and I often said, it's about trusting and obeying Lord God. Trusting and obeying. Mary trusted and she obeyed. And that's why we can take our example from Mary, a young I would call her a young child. Can you imagine Joseph is thinking, hold on a second, not even I can get, get first taste of my wife. What must Joseph have been thinking? You're gonna use my, my beloved Mary to bring a, a, a child into this world. It took faith even from Joseph to accept and receive that word. The reception of the word, the revelation of that word is that which gives life to everything that God has sown into our lives. Every dream, every if your dream and your purpose is outside the will of God, I'm telling you, bring it back into the alignment to God's will and purpose. See, the word of God says this. This is the confidence that we have of him, that if we ask anything according to his, his will, we have it. And if we know that we have it, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him according to his will for our life. It's always according to God's will. It's not about twisting God's arm and saying that, God, you got, I'm going to make my plans like Joseph and Mary could have made their plans and say, you know what, like we do as husbands and wives, we say, you know what, we're going to just put off um, having children for three years so we can enjoy one another, we can travel around, we can uh, just get to know one. They could have said that, but they said, no, <laughs> I will do the will of God. What God's will, I will receive it into, I will receive it into my life. And so um, I'm not going to labor over this. I'm just going to say to you this. Mary gave birth to her savior. Shall I say that again? Mary gave birth to her savior. Not the sa just the savior of her physical body, but the savior, savior of her soul. the true self, Mary gave birth. There is something in you that you have to give birth to. And you have to say to God, God, I give it to you. When we come into the alignment of God, there's nothing the devil can do. Remember this. In every situation, in every case, the devil went after Mary, Joseph, and that child, more so Jesus himself, to destroy him, to eradicate him, to kill him, to destroy him, to wipe out the purposes of God, the devil couldn't touch him. Even when he grew up, the devil could not touch him. I'm telling you, the devil cannot touch you once you're incubating the will of God. Hallelujah. Once you are carrying the will of God, once you're committed to do the will of God, mm. the devil cannot touch you. I'm not saying that you can't, you won't go through affliction. 
Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver us out of them all so that we may, may fulfill our assignment upon earth. God loves each and every one of you. Don't look at yourself and say, I'm not worthy. You, every one of you are worthy. Even Mary might have looked at herself and thinking, really? I'm 14 years old, 15, and you weren't coming to me. But you know what? She listened and she pondered in her heart. She might have been, as you might be, a little perplexed, but every, any one of you would have been perplexed. If someone comes to me and says, oh, Chris, as I said to you before, Chris, you're going to give birth to a son. And I'm thinking, well, I'm a man. How can I give birth? Am I going to question God? Maybe I, I will, because I'd be a little perplexed. How are you going to do that? It was an impossible situation. Do you understand? Each, Mary was not engaging in anybody. She was not having sexual relationship. This isn't about human intervention. This was supernatural intervention. But she received that word in faith. I want to say to each and every one of you, God has given you a word. He's planted, uh, God has given me words. And you know what? Every time I just do, God just confounds me. It's like, what? Grace can tell you. I mean, I, I can't believe. Sometimes I look back and I think, how did I arrive at that? How? Did it happen? How is it? And I say this, and I, I will tell the story, full story. And I've got, I've got all the footage and everything. How is it that God takes me supernatural? And I'm saying everything was a miracle, provided the finances, everything for me to do anything I wanted to do in Kenya amongst the Maasai people, a tribe of people that are the least considered the least of the least amongst the nation there are many there's about 37 tribes in kenya and they are the least of the least god would call me to them and god would enable his will to be affected just through obedience just through loving god and saying yes i will yes i i do yes i will being married to the will of god is the best thing you can do when you say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. And so I just want to say to you that God sent his son, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. gave birth. You might say an immaculate conception. Gave birth to a child that grew up. Didn't come in, didn't give birth to, and I often say this. Jesus wasn't born as a man. He didn't come out of the womb of Mary and say, hello, Mary, I'm the son of God. Would have scared her to death. He grew up from a baby, an infant. And the Bible says he waxed strong in wisdom, understanding knowledge. The favor of God was upon him. I'm telling to you today, that the faith from the moment you said yes to the Lord, the favor of God was upon you. Mm. It's just that you may never have realized it. The favor of God was upon you. God knew you before you was even conceived in your mother's womb. And God had an, as an allotted time for you to serve on this earth, just as Jesus did. 33 years, I can look at my own life and I look at Cheryl and I say, God bless you, Father God. Cheryl Ann had an extra year than Jesus did. Jesus died at 33. Cheryl Ann died at 40, 34. One more year. I'm thankful. I had her for 34 years. And I thank God she fulfilled a divine purpose here on earth. And you might say, what was that be? God knows. Eternity has been sown in our hearts and we just don't know. We don't know what we do when we, every time we obey God, we don't know the ramifications of what it will bring to the kingdom of God. Just obey, trust and obey. So Sherilyn, 
a blessing. Your life, each and every one of your lives are a blessing. Be faithful. Do what God has called you to do. And know this, even as Mary went to visit Elizabeth, and uh, <laughs> even as she was carrying that child, what happened is that the, the, the child in Elizabeth, both of them, it leapt. There was a sense of, hey, this is confirmation. This is confirmation. Oh, yes. Hey, hallelujah. Let me tell you hey. something. When you come and you walk in your divine purpose, people will say to you, hey, this is a confirmation. Hey, the baby will jump in you. That's the will of God will jump in you, but it will also jump in somebody else. They will be excited about what you are carrying. Favor will follow you as it followed Mary. Give birth to your vision, the God-given vision. The savior of the world has come and he's come and he's in each and every one of you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. you are the reason for the season. That's why Jesus died and he rose again. He was born, he died and he rose again for each and every one of us that we may be incubators and carriers of his will to reach out to a dying world so that God might be glorified. So every time you see Jesus is a reason for the season, look at yourself and say, you know what? I'm the reason for the season. We are the reason for the season. Each and every one of you, you call your name because you know what? All of you are part of the family of God. And because of that, you have a divine purpose upon your life. Give birth to that divine purpose and see what God will do. Jesus accomplished more in his death than he did when he was walking upon the earth. Let it be said, like Paul said, I fought a good fight. I finished my, my course, I've kept the faith. Henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the righteous judge shall give me. But not only for me, but all those that love his appearing. Let pray that you will love his appearance. In other words, don't be fearful of dying. For, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But leave this place empty. Don't carry it to the grave with you. Leave this place empty, knowing that you have fulfilled your divine assignment as Mary did. And remember this. I'm just going to bring something to you. Why was Jesus crucified? It was because he said he was the son of God, the king of the Jews. Do you know as a mother, Going to Golgotha, seeing Jesus on the cross, she could have said, as the mother said, no, 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 my son, no, he's not the son of God, he's my son. But she didn't. She had allowed, she allowed God's will to be fulfilled. And though it pained her to see her son, die on the cross. Remember, she carried him. She nurtured him. She was with him for much of his life. There was a connection. She had to release him because she loved the father and because of the will and the, because of the purpose that was assigned upon her life. Let us be the same. Let us be willing to release those things that will hold us back and let the will of God be manifested in our lives. We thank God. We thank God for Mary and for the example that she showed. So many of us will hold on. If, if God came today and said, I'm going to strip you naked, 
and I don't mean physically, but if I'm going to take everything that's dear to you away from you, would you say, God, yes, I'm willing? Or would you say, no, 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 I can't afford to. No, Lord, please, Satan, get thee behind me. Would you be rebuking Satan? You have to know when God is speaking. If someone's going to take the place of God in your life, you have to know you've got to release that thing. As much as Mary loved Jesus, she released Jesus into his divine assignment. And it was fulfilled on him dying on that cross and raising from the dead. Praise be to God. So bless you, each and every one of you. I just pray that you would have received a word. You may not have heard it that way before, but that's, that's the word of the Lord. Mary was a remarkable woman. It's not easy when you're a child to receive a word like that or a message like that or a visitation like that and just totally give yourself over to the Lord. Many of you have come to God at different ages, through different stages, through different, through different experiences. But you know what? Every one of you has received a divine visitation from God. And God is continually speaking to you and saying, be faithful. As you're faithful in little, God will make you ruler over much. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. I'm just going to pray right now and just thank God for his word. And I just pray that God will continue to bring increase to every one of your lives. Take hold of this word. Seek it. Read it for yourself. Read it over again. There's, there's a Magnificat where um, Mary exalts the Lord as her savior. She seen herself as a handmaiden and everything. Gives praise to Jesus Christ. She was blessed and she was highly favored. When you hear people say that, you say to them, do you know what that really means? <laughs> to be blessed and highly favored. That means you're walking in the perfect will of God. Amen. Obedience, trust, amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. I thank you for your word this afternoon. I pray that the very seed of your word will be planted in the hearts of your people. But Father, that even as they take hold of that word and digest it and even dissect it. I pray that it will bring forth life and nutriment to their ways and their being and to their purpose, Lord. In other words, fresh revelation will come to them, reveal truth that will make them free, but not only them, but make all those that they come into contact free. Lord, use them. Let them know this world is not about self, but it's about being selfless, even as Christ was selfless. He came not to be ministered unto, not to be served, hallowed and lifted up, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. And we know that our call is not for ourselves, but even as Mary was called, she was faithful to fulfill that call and said, I... I receive that word. She received it by faith okay. and complete trust in you, not knowing and not understanding. And sometimes we just feel that we have to understand everything before we can do it. Trust and obey, for there's no other way. There's no other way. And so, Father, even Jesus, everything he did, he did it because. He heard you, Father God, saying it to him. And we have to just pray, and I pray, Father, that even I, every one of us, will develop that intimate relationship with you, that we know that it's your voice. We know that it's your voice. It's your unction. It's your prompting. It's your urging. And so as we do that, Father God, we know that Everything will be established in and through our lives, in spite of everything, knowing that all things work together for good to them that love God, 
and accord according to his purpose. Not our own purpose, but your purpose, Lord. And so I thank you. I thank you over this period that we remember that we are the reason for the season. Yeah. Every single person out there, because you said you wish that none should perish, but all should come to repentance. So Jesus, you died for everybody, yeah. that they may have a divine purpose in you. And even as people are busy going about their, doing their everyday thing, being indulging in the season, not remembering you, I pray that this word will be a spirit that will resonate, even as we might share it from a perspective that has been shared today, that they may see the light of that gospel and that the light of the gospel will be turned on on the inside of them and that they may again be part of your family, a heavenly family, a divine family, a holy family. Father, we thank you for all these things. And so, Father, we decree and declare salvation right now. I decree and declare it over the platform right now. The revolution and revelation in our hearts and minds of your people, that they will walk forth and go into a new year, not with, um, shall I say, plans for themselves, but plans that align up with your will. Father God, have your own way, I pray. And I pray, Father God, that uh, over this period, that even as you speak to your children by the Holy Spirit, lead and direct them into all truth, cover them and protect them, give them knowledge, heavenly knowledge and wisdom, Father, that they use it for your glory and that there will be an advancement of your kingdom. We bless you, Lord, and I commit everything into your hands. Touch, remember this, it's in your action that determines your destiny in Christ. Action the will of God and see that you will come out on the other side, your healing will be affected. Your prosperity will be affected. Your wisdom and your knowledge will be affected. Everything will increase supernaturally and exponentially because of your obedience. Father, we thank you for that divine example, a humble servant like Mary can give us this afternoon. Thank you, Lord. Bless you. And let the whole platform to say, Amen and praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Amen. 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 What a word. What a word. We we, we quote Jesus is the reason for the season, but what was the reason for Jesus? We were, we were the reason for Jesus. So, ah, oh, glory to God. Amen. There was a purpose for him coming and it was for us. Jesus died for us and he was here for us. God bless you, Pastor Chris. That was a wonderful revelation. And, uh, you know, just be like Mary and say, Lord, according to to your word be unto me you know just trust him that if god said it he will make it come to pass and just believe that he can do it because it, it, i mean mary couldn't even work it out in her own mind how that's going to happen but it, she didn't need to work it out because you know it wasn't for her to work out it was for her to say yes and and um accept that if the word came to her then God, so be it. So if God has spoken to you, don't try and work it out because we can't. We can't work it out. Just say, yes, Lord, let your will be done and see what God will do. So I thank God for this message of Christmas message of um, Jesus coming into the world. And God saw that it was for us why Jesus came. 
and to God be the glory. So have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your Christmas celebrations. I've got turkey left over. I've got lamb left over. <laughs> I've got mac and cheese left over. If anybody wants to come over, <laughs> I've got lots of food here. So God bless you. Oh, and, hey. and, and remember this. They say, I don't know who day is, but they say it tastes sweeter on the second day <laughs> than it does on the first day. <laughs> oh, good to go. Uh, enjoy and uh, we look forward to um, meeting up again on, on Monday. God bless you. So remember that, uh, that we're, we're going to continue as normal. Nothing's changed. We're going to have fellowship in the morning, 6.40. Tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow morning, going right through the week again. So if you can, please reach out to your friends, uh, your family, your loved ones, whatever. Invite them onto the platform uh, and uh, join us. Join us and as we see the new year in. All right? <laughs> Praise be to God. Oh, Des 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 Desreen. <laughs> yes, Desreen. See you, late. see you later. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> If, it's, if you're accessible, we're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God bless, bless you. you. Yeah. Amen. We're just going to be um, ministered to by song, and uh, I know that uh, it's uh, song appropriate. So bless you, Keith. Go ahead. Have a blessed and empowered week, and I trust that every one of you will see you on the platform at some time this week. All right? Amen. So I'm not going to say Happy New Year yet or Blessed New Year. I'm just going <laughs> to say I'll see you soon. Yeah, see you tomorrow morning. Amen. Amen. So this song, um, yeah, I know it's Christmas themed, I, but there's something that was screaming out loudly. If you heard the message that Pastor Chris was sharing, this song was, it's like, Lord, should I? Shouldn't I? I'm worried, I'm worried, I'm worried. And when Pastor Chris said it, when Mary said yes, that's when this song came from. And I thought, okay, that's confirmation. Because literally, as Pastor Chris said it, I was asking the God, should I play it? And oh, yeah. <laughs> the was, yes. But, and literally, the song is called Say Yes by Samuel Medis. So Amen. God bless you, every single one of you. God bless you. Catch me. I say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes, yes. I say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. Amen. Lovely. Sweet and to the point. Yes, say yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. yes, Lord, yes. Yeah, here am I, Lord. <laughs> to your will and to your way. Yes, Lord, yes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, look, let us continue to say yes, Lord, yes. And uh, just see what God will do coming into the new year. Be expectant. And I can say truly now I can be expectant like Mary because God has placed his purpose in me be Amen. expectant and see it manifest and save lives praise be to God God Jesus is a life giver is a life giver in him Christ his life Zoe life the God kind of a life and that life is a light of men. And that word light means development of men. 
So allow the life of Christ to grow in you and be expressed outwardly to all those that you come into contact with. Amen. See the development of humanity on every side in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise Hallelujah. Me. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about what God's going to bring in the coming days, weeks, months. I'm excited. Be excited. Amen. Be excited about God, what God is doing in your life and just remain faithful. God is a faithful God. Amen. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Um, Maxine saying that she's on well. Okay, we're, we're going to pray before we leave. We're going to pray for our dear sister. Maxine. Uh, Maxine, she's, is she on the platform? Yeah, yeah. Maxine, bless you, Maxine. Um, so she's been sick with a na nasty flu. Uh huh. But thank God she's not in hospital. Amen. Amen. So it's a flu. She's not in hospital. But uh, we know that flus can um, sometimes have a knockout effect where you feel apathetic, um, lazy, just, you know, yucky. But we're going to pray. Can't believe I use that word yucky. Never used that word in my life. Um, but uh, we're going to pray for her. And we, I just want you to stretch your hearts towards um, Maxine right now. We're going to come against that flu and just pray now. In Jesus' name, God will just lift her out of her sickbed in the name of Jesus and infuse her with supernatural strength. Maxine, there's purpose upon your life. There's so much. You're such a blessing. You're such a beautiful person. There's so much God wants you to do in and through you. And I'm just going to decree and declare that God's going to take you out of the confines of your home. And Amen. Out into the open where you can truly be all, all that God has called you to. You have no, someone inside of you that needs to be expressed. And uh, you're such a beautiful person. And so don't allow your circumstances to get on top of you. Get on top of your circumstances. In Amen. the name of Jesus. Amen. Father God, just stretch your hearts towards her and just pray. Oh, Father God, I just thank you for Maxine right now. Father, you know that. She's suffering in her body. And Father, we know that. We know the very reason for the season. It was Maxine came and died for Maxine. Right? To save her, to deliver her, to restore her, to enable her, to empower her, to provide for her. Every single day. So Father, I speak to a physical ailment right now to command you to Every single thing that is not right what it should be, we call it back into normality. Right now, in I come against it. We pray against every single infection from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. We renounce it itself as a clinical above our sister. We renounce it over her very life, her very existence, her very purpose, her every moment. Moment that she oh brings in the lift, name of that Jesus, she will I feel that healing. We call forth out every single right thing Jesus. that's trying to take Father, itself as a positioning inside of her belly vessel. Father, we pray a release completely right more God. Because you are God and God alone. You are the one able to change every circumstance over our distance. She is released from every single situation. Released from every single separation, every single problem. Thank you every single every thing, thing that the enemy has tried to plant, we pray loud, thou, thou, God, to remove it in totality. Every single body, every single thing, that sickness is not her portion. And because she is a child of God, that healing is a children's bread. And as of bread, she will eat of it and eat that healing. In the name of Jesus, I pronounce it over her body that tomorrow she will be different from how she is now. And not now, Lord God, that she will sort out. Now is a day of salvation in Jesus' name. There is healing in abundance for our sister. She is to walk in it, live it, and breathe. Father, I descend 
We pray, yes, Lord God, that your blood will cleanse us. Any person, any person, any person that is every person that may be unwell. Father, we know that sometimes have we your way in our life. Have your way through their lives, Lord God. Have your way through the platform. Like we want to do things. Overcome you, Lord God. Your those infirmities and those sicknesses, oh and those diseases and those illnesses. Right now, the Hallelujah. spread of infirmity, you go. Hallelujah. Your children, loose, loose God's Every children, right? One, now, Lord. In Jesus' name. Yeah. The blood of Jesus is against you. And I Hallelujah. and every infirmity by name, you bow to the name Amen. of Jesus. Right now. No you other bow name above your name, your name Lord. Jesus. Yes. Bow now in Jesus' Jesus name. name. And Father, we release your healing Healing, virtue and your power. Be healed right now. Receive it by faith. Those those pains, those illnesses, those infirmities, those sicknesses, those reports, right now, we tear them up. We dispel them. We dismiss them right now. And thank thank you, Father. And we decree and declare that through Jesus Christ, we are the reason for the season. Hallelujah. By his stripes, we are healed in Jesus' name. And we take a hold of that. Thank you, Lord, mm. for your deliverance in Jesus' Hallelujah. name. Amen. 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 It's, Praise it's, be. It's done. Praise be to God. Thank it's you. Done. Thank you. So bless you. Ziri, Bev, Beverly, Tamara, Donna, mm. Marcia. Pastor. Delreen, oh bless you, Delreen. Long time, Maxine. <laughs> Hallel- looking good, looking good, Delreen, looking good. Nisha, uh-huh. Hector, bless you, Hector. Elaine, mm-hmm. um, Marv- Mother Brown, mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Keith, bless you, Daniel, Dinah. Ah, oh. Jackie, Jackie, bless you, Jackie. You. Peter. You. This is my sister. Hi. This is my sister Trisha. Oh, hi, Trisha. Hi, Trisha. Hi, Trisha. How are you doing? Hi. Nice to see you, Trisha. I pray that you were blessed by the message. If you were listening, that is, I don't know. But yeah, praise be to God. You're so welcome. Yeah. Be empowered to okay, prosper. Thank Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have, a, have a great um, evening, you. afternoon. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll see one All another right. again. Praise God on a platform during the week at some time. Tomorrow. Have a great day. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Take good care. Bye, Bye. everybody. Bye, Bye Delry. Bye. Bye. Enjoy, everyone. Have a good day. <laughs> good to see you. Bye, everyone. Praise be to God. Bye. Bye. Pastor Chris. Glory. 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 Bless you. <laughs> Bye-bye. If you want anything, okay, you can you. come around. We've got some things for you. Hallelujah. It's been oh. poured up. Yeah? Okay. Okay. <laughs> hey, praise be to God. All right, then. Bye, all. Bye, all. And tomorrow, Bye. we'll get to you this week. All right? Thank you, Pastor Chris. Amen. Bye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye.